Thank you so much for joining me today, Noor. We've really enjoyed what you had to say on your panel, and I'm wondering, could you connect the dots between venture capital and AI technology for us? Absolutely, and thank you for having me. Um, so when we think about venture capital, it's really about investing in up and coming technologies and their applications around the world. So not just the technologies themselves like AI, so you can have AI companies, but also companies that use AI. So as this AI movement has been recently happening and the interest has been increasing in AI, the question that we take a look at is which industries will be most transformed, which companies can use this very effectively to solve problems that affect hundreds of millions of people. So by transform, do you mean people's jobs? Are people losing jobs or are people going to have to implement AI technology into their existing jobs? I think the best analogy we have is it's the same as the internet. So when we think about 20 years ago and the dot-com movement and the internet, people's jobs changed. So people upskilled, people moved into new roles, people learned about the new technology, companies were better for it. So before the internet, there was no e-commerce, you couldn't buy things online, there was no way to do any fintech, financial money, or even if you think about the way that you, you know, book your transport. So all of that was enabled with the smartphone, the internet, and all of that technology. Similarly now, AI is moving things into a, we're gonna do things in a new way, using a new technology. And what that looks like 20 years from now, nobody knows, just like now we take a look back 20 years ago and there's no way we could have predicted. But just like the dot-com boom, you'll have a lot of companies making little incremental changes that are really hyped up that may or may not succeed. But over the long term, you'll have a brand new industry built. So speaking of hype, is AI the new metaverse? Remember last year, everyone spoke about the metaverse. Absolutely. Is, is that what's going on? I don't think so. I think that the change in quantum computing power that's available now over the last five years, the drastic shift and the increase in that power has enabled us to crunch the loads of data that we've been accumulating over the last 20 years in a very different way that is affordable. Mm -hmm. Crunching a lot of data and a lot of information and spewing out ever improving information using this huge compute power is what we're calling AI. AI has been around for 30 or 40 years even. And even three years ago, MIT published a paper that was saying how 82% of large companies in the Middle East and Africa, which is where I operate, use AI. And that was three years ago. So now maybe that number has moved up a few basis points, but it shows that you really are not taking a look at AI from a, is it a today hype? But rather this paper was published three years ago, there's papers published 10 years ago and 30 years ago. It's just every so often there's a step change. Mm -hmm. And right now we've seen a step change because of the quantum compute power available. Wow. So could you tell me a little bit about, I, I keep reading about you and the, the London Stock Exchange. How, how is that different from the New York Stock Exchange? So when we listed our company on the London Stock Exchange, it was um, April 2008. So just before that global financial crisis. And I mm -hmm. ran that company for five years um, on the public side. And then New York Stock Exchange is a little different. It caters to more uh, New York or US-based companies rather. Uh, the London Stock Exchange caters a lot more to European and global companies. So each has its own little nuances, mm -hmm. uh, but generally the governance across these stock exchanges is quite consistent. Very strong governance, very strong board structures, very strong policies. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to the companies that you're looking at investing in, are, do you, are you seeing more AI technology in America companies or in international companies? We're seeing AI being implemented across the world. The way that it's being used varies. So whereas um, you know, in the US people talk about workflow improvement and kind of how you can improve your software a little bit more, in different parts of the world, you can use it to solve larger or different problems. So in Africa, you can use it, for example, to improve yield production, thereby trying to solve for food security. You can also use it from a perspective of um, countries that have no credit scoring and therefore their financial systems lack the ability to micro lend, which can enable entrepreneurs and people to have new jobs and new businesses. Well, using AI, you can come in and say, can we do a different version of credit scoring? And so you can really use it to solve problems that tackle basic human needs, education, 
So you can now have more personalized education around the world in different languages in a much more affordable way. So when you think about the implication of AI to society, think about how we can use it to solve problems at a mass scale in a much cheaper way in an individualized fashion. I want to know your thoughts on the downsides of AI technology. I think all technology has downsides. So the, if you misuse anything, there's a downside. And I think our role is to ensure that the upside is greater than the downside. Well, when we speak of misusing it, at, I keep hearing at certain points AI technology could become smarter than us. So would it really be the human misusing or, or, or something greater, like AI destroys us? Like robots take over the world. There it is. <laughs> um, so I don't think robots are going to take over the world. Mm. I do wonder how complacent we become. So even if you think about something as basic as Google Maps, most of the times I get into my car to drive, I'll put the destination in Google Maps, mm -hmm. even though I know where I'm going. And I think that level of complacency or trusting or dependency, however you'd like to see it, but hey, let me check where the traffic is, right? And I'm going to take the same road regardless. <laughs> I'm just checking because I should or could, and it's, it's silly not to check, right. right? And so if you take that simple thing that we do occasionally and then extrapolate that to, are we going to have a device think for us? And if the device is... Uh, productivity and outcome is only as good as our thinking, and our thinking becomes increasingly complacent, then what does that say about the device? So when we think about the technology and the way that it grows, we need to continue to grow. So I think you know, something that's really interesting in education is how the schools have said we you know, children should not be using chat GPT and so on. And there's the one argument on, yes, it does hallucinate still, and we've seen that now in lawsuits and so on, where it's made up cases historically. But if you think about what schools have been teaching us, they're telling our children, which is we're going to teach them how to think, how to become critical thinkers, what questions to ask. So if the schools are genuinely teaching our children what to think versus how to think, right, now they are worried. Whereas if they were teaching them, as they were saying they were, what questions to ask and how to be critical thinkers, AI is never going to do that for you. Hmm. Right? AI is going to simply extrapolate where you leave off. Right? So schools should not be worried if they were being honest and that we're teaching them how to become critical thinkers. We're teaching them what questions to ask. Great. And then they don't need to answer those questions. And AI can, as long as it's not hallucinating. So there's still so much to be done, but taken in a positive light, it really does just empower us. I think any technology takes the human power and just amplifies it. So you, you don't think what the Center for AI Safety said a few weeks ago in their announcement that it could potentially cause human extinction. You don't think that's the case? Um, I don't think it's gonna cause human extinction in the way that, that we imagine it. But I do think if you take a look at social media as an outcome of the internet, that's probably something we may have been better off without as a humanity. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for joining me today, Noor. Thank you.